Hello and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And some interesting news, Rusty Erasmus is currently, as we speak, uh, giving his pre-match press conference, uh, what team announcement press conference, ahead of the Springboks' first ever match against Portugal this weekend. In case you have missed it, Sal Murat is in as captain, a bunch of new uncapped players, as well as some new players on the bench. Um, but more importantly, maybe, looking sort of into the rugby championship, is that he has also given an injury update on a few of the players, and uh, not good news at all, uh, with uh, Edward van der Frank Mostert, as well as Pierre Steph the Toy, all set to be out for quite a while, which extends the sort of, uh, I wouldn't say injury crisis or so, but a pretty long list of players who are currently unavailable uh, for the Spring Marks. Before we get into it, please do smash a like on the video, please do subscribe to the channel as well. So over the Island Series and for this Portugal test, we have been without the likes of Steven Kitsoff, uh, Lourdes Diaga, Jean Klein, Jasper Vies has been uh, suspended, for example. Uh, Cameron Honecom, um has been injured as well. And um, so we have missed, been missing quite a few players. Uh, Jaden Hendricks are currently out. Um, so we, there are definitely quite a few players, uh, Kenny Moody as well, um, who have been missing already. You know, I played a, play a list of about six or seven. Um, and now that has actually unfortunately been lengthened. So Frank Mostert has got a broken leg apparently uh, and is out for six weeks um, at least. Um, it sounds like it should be more, so I think maybe broken leg might be a little bit of a trivial way of actually of having put it. Um, maybe a bit more complicated than that. It seemed more like a sort of a knee injury when he sort of walked off, kind of walked off with a bit of a limp. Uh, the big news though is Edel van der Merwe as well ruled out for six weeks, which is heartbreaking for him because I do think he was in line to play again against Portugal, and I think he might have had an outside shot of going to Australia. Um, and then Pierre the Toy, one of the most inexpensive players from the box is also set to be out for about four to six weeks. He's definitely apparently out of the Australia tour and will be in a bit of a race against time to face New Zealand at the end of August. So luckily there is a bit of a, a break between now and those All Black tests because we've got Portugal this weekend, then we've got a break, then we've got, uh, then we've got Australia for two weeks, then we've got a break. So there is time, hopefully, for some of these players to hopefully get back into it. Uh, the likes of the Ken and will come available quite soon. Hopefully, Pierre Steph to Toy can be ready for that All Blacks test. I think Jasper Visa becomes available after the Australasia tour and, and will be available for uh, the All Blacks. I think, from my understanding, uh, Cameron Heinekorn potentially could be ready as well. You know, sort of beginning of August. Interesting to see maybe he might make the Australia tour. Um, so it's not great news from a stream off perspective, but silver lining, I suppose, we're going to have to be forced to look at our depth. So, for example, three locks now out. You know, even it's a bit the only. Uh, lock remaining really from the five we took to the World Cup. No Marvin Ori in the squad. Um, sorry, and Arkis Neyman. Arkis Neyman is there, but uh, no Frank Mostert, no Jean Klein, and Lourdes Diago didn't make it to the, to, the, to the World Cup squad, but as a previous World Cup winner. So, yeah, we're definitely going to have to sort of extend our, our, our lock depth. And interesting to see, for example, that Ruan Fenter is covering lock this weekend. Ben Jason Dixon um, is, is also something that can cover lock, but also interesting given the, those injuries, we haven't called in somebody like a Ruben van Heerden. Uh, in terms of PSF to Troy, well, I think it's a big game for Jane Jason Dixon this weekend. You can really, I think for me, put his hand up and put himself into that potential role as the succession plan for Peter Steph to Troy, because I do think that he plays a very similar type of game. So there's definitely spots up for grabs here. You know, opportunity in, in the lock. Someone Murat needs to try and put his hand up. Maybe everyone Fenter. You know, in, in the flanks, for example, Ren Jason Dixon, Ulrich Lowe, they're going to go toe-to-toe. Evan Lowe's got a massive opportunity this weekend to just try and keep himself maybe a little bit ahead of a Cameron Honeycomb uh, or a Cocker Smith from starting, for example, and getting ready for when Jasper Vista comes back. So it's an interesting time because spots in the squad, I think, are so, so, so competitive. You know, Stephen Kitsov comes back. Who's going to drop out? You know, obviously this weekend, you know, like the likes of Jan Hendrik Vessel and stuff like that. Chaos Dinekons, though, had a very nice uh, tournament for his, uh, or a couple of games. Uh, so I do think that things are very competitive within the squad as well. And uh, that's why we haven't really focused on the injuries, but there is a pretty large injury list growing, almost up to about 10 players. No Damien Willemser, so I don't know why I completely forgot to mention him. He still remains out as well. So, I mean, we're talking about in terms of starters. Pierre Steph de Toy is a starter. Frank Hamaster is a starter. Stephen Kitzel is a starter. Damien Willemser is, is a starter, for example. Um, so we are missing Jasper Vista, probably a starter as well. We are missing quite a few players in amongst the squad. So a very interesting nice opportunity to see how we manage this with regards to building that depth, but also remaining competitive because we want to win the rugby championship. We want to, you know, continue winning test matches. I, I really strongly despise the idea of results between the World Cups aren't important. Of course they're important. You know, you don't want to go out and lose 12 tests. If they weren't important, then why do we sack us to a good say? You never got to a World Cup, you know? So everyone says results aren't important until we start losing two or three games. 
That is the biggest problem. We sit there saying, no, results are not important. Before the game, we say results are not important, experiment. And after the game, we sit there saying, oh, well, you know, we should never be losing to this team. So I think sometimes we can be a little bit inconsistent. But it is a very interesting time um, coming up. So big blows to the box, but big opportunities for players as well. Let me know down in the comments below who you think can potentially step up. Which players are you really missing the most? I want to know in the comments. Smash the like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.